The environmental movement has grown steadily, a series of waves, each a bold new direction taken by pioneers. Their visionary strategies ripple throughout history. We call it finding the ways that work. 1903, Sierra Club founder John Muir hikes with President Teddy Roosevelt in the wilds of Yosemite. Muir's riding on threats to America's wilderness strikes a chord with Roosevelt, despite conventional wisdom that the land is infinite. Their talks around the campfire convince him to preserve an unprecedented amount of our land. Doing so, Roosevelt inspires a new age of conservation and the first wave of the U.S. environmental movement. But by mid-century, it is no longer sufficient to just set land aside. Industrial pollution is ravaging our air and water. Silent Spring has been called the most controversial book of the year. Scientist Rachel Carson publicly exposes the deadly effects of the pesticide DDT. Unless we do bring these chemicals under better control, we are certainly headed for disaster. 1967, Long Island, New York. Three scientists are finding dramatic DDT evidence in their own studies. Frustrated by government inaction, the scientists team up with a lawyer and launch the Environmental Defense Fund. The group takes a radical new approach, bring the fight to court. In a groundbreaking decision, EDF founders win a U.S. ban on DDT, helping to usher in the second wave of environmental progress. EDF, Natural Resources Defense Council, and other groups begin using the power of legal action. As the public's awareness of our environmental devastation grows, so does EDF's impact. Using the partnership of science and law, the organization helps make critical advances, banning a cancer-causing flame retardant in children's pajamas, ridding hair dryers of asbestos, removing toxic lead from gasoline. The successes are big, but the problems grow bigger, so the solutions grow more creative. 1986. EDF President Fred Krupp implements a new approach pioneered in EDF's California office, harnessing the power of markets and challenging businesses to drive change. There's tremendous economic opportunities in converting the world to a green future. McDonald's announced that it will stop wrapping its sandwiches in those plastic foam containers. Three months ago, the Environmental Defense Fund began working with McDonald's and hailed today's announcement as a watershed. EDF helps design a market-based system that cuts acid rain pollution by more than 85%, builds partnerships with corporate giants that change practices in global supply chains, helps fishermen become stewards of the sea by acquiring a long-term economic stake in their fisheries, and co-sponsors California's first-in-the-nation law to cap and reduce the carbon pollution that causes global warming. Today, with the impacts of climate change growing ever more destructive, there is an even greater urgency to the work. So EDF, the Nature Conservancy, World Wildlife Fund, and others are tapping the power of a new wave of environmental work that can scale up the solutions we need by bringing innovation to environmental advocacy. New technology that empowers people by giving them access to information. Pollution sensors and data analytics that make the invisible not only visible, but actionable. And partnerships with people around the world that include hundreds of stakeholders from science, industry, grassroots, and the public sector. We are at a critical moment. Maintaining a planet where people and nature prosper is no small task, and it will only be accomplished by human ingenuity and decisive action. 50 years of achievement gives us confidence that humankind can meet the challenges facing our world and keep finding the ways that work.